Welcome to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. Each week we talk about heart rate variability and how it can be used to improve your overall health and wellness. Please consider the information in this podcast for your informational use and not medical advice. Please see your medical provider to apply any of the strategies outlined in this episode. Heart Rate Variability Podcast is a production of Optimal LLC and Optimal HRV. Check us out at OptimalHRV.com. Please enjoy the show. Welcome, friends, to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. I am Matt. I am back with uh, Dave and Ina today uh, for our last episode with you um, on the book. We'll we'll follow this up with uh, the chapter and the conclusion. So you'll hear from me a little bit, but... uh, uh, we wrap this up with our personal strategies. So that's us talking about this. Just a, a great voiceover person who did our book, um, saying things mo- more coherently than I do on the podcast. So uh, no reason to repeat that. Uh, but Dave, Ina, great to see you today. We we are hitting um, sort of our uh, the final parts of the book. And if you're new to the podcast, I should say before I get going, um, you have hit us uh, well into a series on our book the heartbeat of business. Um, So I really highly, well, first, welcome to the podcast. We're glad you're here. Uh, Second, I really encourage you to go back to episode one of this series. Just uh, we're releasing uh, audiobook chapters and we're talking about those chapters as we go through. So it's been a whole lot of fun. Even though I got to write this book with Ina and Dave, uh, this process is like talking about it is is just as fun as writing it, if not more, because I get to see you more as I do this. So uh, this has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, so chapter nine and really chapter 10 as well, when we talk about what we do personally, is we're looking at individual strategies for peak performance. Um, and obviously we go through this and as you go through chapter nine, chapter 10, you'll get a lot of both uh, research suggestions. Um, also you'll get our personal strategies and how we implement these as well. So. You know, as I was writing this and working with you all on this, there, there were a couple things that, that really stuck out for me. Um, and the first one has to do with donuts. Um, I personally love donuts. Um, it's hard to find a vegan donut when somebody brings them to work. They're usually not vegan. So I have a little like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I can't eat the donuts. But I really love them. And I love the ones like the cream filled ones, the ones that like have 8,000 calories. So I'm a fan of donuts. As a manager, I think I helped turn a culture around at one time, feeding staff. Uh, it was it, the only thing I did, but it's like, initially they they just, I, I interviewed staff because the culture was a disaster when I took it over. And they're like, they get donuts in other parts of the organization. Why don't we don't get donuts? So the next day I brought donuts in. Things changed and they didn't change that not everything improved, but that, and then we started like having pancake breakfasts for people. Like, so I cooked for them. Uh, You know, there's something about eating together that's very communal. And then I do all this research on heart rate variability and I don't know if we should bring donuts to work anymore. So, you know, Ina, this is kind of a fun way to talk about bigger issues. But I think some of the things we do, uh, catering, my other fun one is bagels. Like I love it when people bring bagels in, especially when there's some vegan cream cheese. Just FYI, don't forget about us out there when you pick up bagels. But things that we also know through research uh, are inflammatory foods. I think donuts are hard to probably create a more inflammatory food than a donut, uh, especially the cream filled ones and Claire's I like. So, you know, it's, it's this thing of we don't want to take the fun out of the business environment. And this is, was one of my struggles writing this section. I never encourage anybody to start their day out, though, with a donut. Like, or bacon, eggs, sausage, or cereal with whole milk in it either. But that's that's me. So I just kind of like, well, how would you see this? What would uh, As leaders kind of struggle with this chapter of, okay, I know some of these foods create inflammation, which exacerbates the stress response and has not is counterproductive on everything we've talked about this book here. But Ina, donuts are good. Donuts are good. So if I came to you saying, Ina, do I buy donuts or not? After reading the book up to this point, what would some suggestions you might uh, give me as a leader? Well, um, I might say yes, 
But <laughs> bring, what I would say is bring a bunch of munchkins and a really big fruit salad to go yes. with it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a big believer in uh, in moderation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously there are s- situations like being vegan where, you yeah. know, donuts generally are just not going to be something that you eat unless somebody goes, you know, to the uh, trouble of finding a <laughs> vegan donut. Uh, so obviously there are exceptions. Sometimes there yeah. are, you know, allergies and intolerances and, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, to the extent possible, um, I do think that uh, moderation is important and completely depriving yourself of something you really love it spells a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, you know, I do a lot of work with people with, you know, all sorts of habit changes, including dietary changes. And, you know, I do find that research shows this. If somebody loves donuts and they can never have another one, they're setting themselves up for failure. Yeah. Uh, but if they can have a munchkin and a bunch of blueberries and strawberries and uh, raspberries and blackberries, they get the best of both worlds. So as a manager, you can show people you care about them by bringing a smallish container of munchkins so everybody can have one or two um and uh, a bunch of uh you know healthier but still yummy um yummy options so so when you say munchkins it, I, i'm thinking i'm eating like the people from <laughs> oh, wizard of oz it, so is this the not a term? like like well I, I'm, I'm picturing like these little like yeah, like what's a munchkin? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, my apologies. I had no idea that this is not a common term. I, uh, I knew but... exactly what you were talking about. Either. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> munchkins are basically the, the the holes from the donuts. They're little little tiny balls made from donuts. It's kind of what you would get if you cut if you cut out that that hole in the donut. So a donut hole. It's a donut hole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned something today. I learned something today. So I love it. I love it. They're they're little. That's, that's I, I know point. exactly. I, they're, they're, I, yeah, I, I just always call them donut holes. So uh, I, I just uh, I didn't know if there there was special something there that I was missing. So uh, yeah, I, I do not it. recommend eating little people. <laughs> I, know. I, just, I don't know where munchkins come from, but I, I, I want to be very careful here because I. I all I just feel even though I don't know what I'm talking about that could be socially inappropriate one way or the other here so I'm gonna stop there I just had some childhood movie pop into my head so uh, I'll always this great. is not what I meant by everything in moderation <laughs> <laughs> all right Dave, now that now that we're getting away from cannibalism uh, yeah. I love love to get uh, your thoughts because uh, you know I, I think and again with your background in athletes as well I, I didn't necessarily i mean we used to carve up before a big game which that has gone way out uh uh the window but i, I just kind of want you how how do you think about this uh you know things that could be seen as really a morale booster to show i care about you like our last episode uh might also be counterproductive L- i'd love to hear how you're balancing that yeah, yes, well, it, absolutely. And uh, and also, you know, to to continue to defend Ina, not only have I heard of that, but I'm pretty positive that's what Dunkin' Donuts calls. Uh, I think it might be Dunkin' Donuts that, term. So, that might be where it come, comes from, it, yeah. So, so thank you, Dave. So you're the weird one here, Matt. It's hey, I, I, that, that, that's usually <laughs> where we land, Dave. So I, I am very comfortable with that role. <laughs> Um, but yes, so Ina, Ina hit it right on the head. Everything in moderation. Um, I, I, you know, my favorite thing in the world is pizza, uh, but I don't eat pizza every single day. It's a, it's an event at my household. We have a pizza oven. We look forward to our Fridays. We make our own dough. We make our pizzas and it's, you know, it's the happiest time. Is that good for us? No. But is it great for us as a family for bonding and making us feel happy and fulfilled? Absolutely. And the same thing is true, you know, in a, in a workplace. Um, if you brought donuts in every single day, even donut holes or or munch or munchkins, whichever you, whichever you are familiar with, <laughs> um, it, that's not. A- Good idea. Uh, we know that that is going to decrease productivity. We know when somebody's eating an inflammatory food, right? What's going to happen? They're going to have that sugar high. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel great. And then about 15 minutes later, half hour later, right? You're going to start to right uh, fall on down. And then you're going to be reaching for your fourth cup of coffee that morning. Um, 
and in addition, we know that's decreasing their health. So if they're on our insurance, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but we definitely want to be focused on that. Yeah. You know what? Every Friday, my boss is going to bring in donuts. They're going to bring in donuts and coffee. And I have that to look forward to at the end of this week. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we all get to stand around. We get to talk around the table where the munchkins or the uh, or the donuts right um and we get to hang out we get to laugh together we get to enjoy each other we get to talk about what we're going to do this weekend it is a big morale booster to do something like that um i love ina's idea of bringing in a large like fruit salad as well so that you have a you know a distractor option um i know i've done two uh there's places around here that will do the uh that will do the paleo donuts mm. um which in my opinion taste even better than the regular thing um, however yeah however they are like you know double the cost uh, which is unfortunate <laughs> <laughs> but you're not you know you, you can feel really good about the fact that you're not um you're not causing a detriment to somebody's health um so bottom line with it matt though is uh, exactly like you said moderation um always practicing moderation with that kind of stuff but absolutely we want to show that we love our employees. We want to show that we we appreciate those around us. And food is one of the best ways to do that. Everybody loves food and it makes everybody happy. Exactly. Happy. Exactly. So so just for the record, a Munchkin is a native fictional uh, character of Munchkin County in Oz. So we were both right. I, I, I wanted to make sure I was uh, not just making something up. So you could be eating a donut hole, which... Uh, I learned something today or a small person from Munchkin County and Oz. So uh, hopefully it's one rather than the other, but I, I think this is to me, uh, all kidding aside, it's those conversations we need to have with each other. Like, you know, what, what is a, you know, I, I think back is those donuts were, I got more benefit than cost to them. Everybody was already a train wreck of a mess as far as burnout was concerned. So like a little sugar actually helped the situation. But, you know, I think it's these conversations to be had is how can we utilize what we know about the stress response, what we know about how nutrition impacts performance and still have fun at work because because you know, it's it's not like we we want to have these events uh, because showing you care about someone again, as we talked about last week and throughout this book, is such a key piece of that as well. I think the other one that falls through this in this category for me uh, is alcohol. Uh, I think alcohol, depending on the business environment you're in, uh, is everywhere. Um, as a business traveler. Uh, I can tell you, uh, my airline sends me free drink tickets because I guess they want me to have margarita as well. I'm at 30,000 feet. Uh, and, and I think that I, I mean, as we've talked about several times on this podcast overall, um, you know, alcohol is a great way to feel better, but also having some of these, uh, uh, pieces as well. So one of the things I thought about is like, reimbursing for alcohol like and i don't want to like take the fun away but it's like what what do how do we think about this and that's what i really struggle with because i know after a hard day of work having a beer or two really tastes delicious um having it at thirty thousand feet having two margaritas you know i better get an uber home from the airport so I, again i, I kind of like to kick this out to both of you as well because this is one that i have like do we want to, do we want people, again, we want people to talk about it, but, you know, do you, do you go as far as saying we don't reimburse for this anymore? Because if you're drinking on business trips, we know you're probably not performing to your best self the next day. So I'd love to get, again, a following up our Munchkin conversation uh, with another of Matt's buzzkills of uh, mm -hmm. how, how do we handle something like alcohol? So I, I'm happy to start, uh, you know, it's pretty easy. Uh, we, you know, in, in none of my roles as, as a supervisor, do we um, really bring alcohol up all that much. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and I, I also don't know how much of a, of a appropriate work topic it is to begin with. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, and definitely we don't go out drinking with, uh, with employees, um, but there is 
once a year or even sometimes where we have a work party. And in that case, yes, we supply alcohol and yes, we are all drinking together. Um, but I think there's that expectation that, you know, I, I, nobody's going to get out of control with it. Although that always happens. Yeah. Um, I, and uh, I, I do not deal with any situations where we have people, uh, you know, traveling on our dollar uh, yeah. where we would talk, talk about reimbursing um, for alcohol. But with that, um, I think that's a tough one because uh, it depends on the industry. And I, uh, and I do know that in some industries it does, uh, you know, especially if you're in a sales type industry, um, you know, you need to take your clients out drinking, right? Uh, that's, that's a social thing to do. So in that case, yeah, I, you know, I, I definitely do it. Um, but yeah, do we also know that it's impacting that person's health in a negative way? Yes. Do we know that it's, um, you know, going to impact their next day's performance in a negative way? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's a, a that's a, a lot of where I'm at. Yeah. And, you know, let me throw this to the question to you just a little bit differently, because I think Dave bring, well, I know Dave brings up a real challenge. And we we try to address this in this chapter. And you can go to optimalhrv.com uh, backslash handouts uh, to get these. They're also in the appendix of the book as well. How do we talk to people about this? Because I think the donut conversation or the munchkin conversation in one way is just a really kind of simple is, hey, we want to bring in lunch. We want to bring in breakfast. We all read this book. We know that donuts probably aren't the best thing for us to bring in. Um, you know, what What can we do? I, I think that's, to me, it's a fairly, you know, a, a good example of an easier conversation. I think when we get into things like alcohol, sleep quality, other aspects of nutrition, because nutrition can be a trigger for a lot of people, as well. I just kind of wonder, like, do, do you have any thoughts about how we can bring up these topics that you have taught us, we have talked about dramatically, am I going to perform at my best today is going to impact that, yet they're usually things that are beyond the scope of business. And I just kind of wonder if you've uh, got any ideas about how as leaders, managers can bring these conversations, uh, at least in an educational way to folks. Yeah, um, good question and definitely a tricky one um, yeah. because, you know, this often falls into the none of your business category. Right. Um, we have to, I think, you know, if um, the industry such where, you know, like Dave was talking about, you know, uh, where there is an expectation that you are going to be taking clients or, uh, you know, there's going to be alcohol uh, in some way involved, um, making the conversation be a part of that. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, let's talk about how alcohol impacts you. Uh, let's talk about what alcohol does, you know, to your brain in general. This is what you want to keep in mind. Um, you know, if, you, if this is a sales meeting and you're yeah. taking a client out for a drink, um, you know, think about how that that drink or two or, or however many you're having might be impacting your ability to uh, to function. So more, you know, as you said, in an educational capacity, here's something for you to think through. Um, including maybe alternatives, because, you know, certainly it's possible that uh, the salesperson taking someone out uh, for drinks is not actually like maybe they, they don't drink for a multiple yeah. in multitude of reasons, you know, health reasons. Maybe they've had a, a problem with alcohol in the past. Maybe uh, it's against their religious beliefs. There's so many reasons why somebody is not going to be drinking alcohol. Maybe they just don't like it. Right. Um, but so, you know, taking that into consideration so that there is no shame in saying that, well, I don't actually drink. And, um, you know, maybe the client they're taking out, you know, is not going to drink. So yeah. just having an ability of uh, thinking through it very importantly in a non-judgmental, non-shaming matter, one way or the other, not shaming for not drinking, not shaming for, for drinking yeah. uh, as well. But more, you know, here's some information and I trust you to figure out what to do with this information. Um, and it, going back to that underlying um, safety and trust uh, that needs to be established in order to have this conversation because it can be difficult. Um, I mean, a conversation about donuts can be tough, right? There's yeah. so much shaming about what right. we eat. Right? Exactly. Uh, so we got to have a foundation of trust. So when you're bringing in, uh, you know, donuts more rarely, right? That's a you know, yeah. very important point that Dave makes, you know, not every day. Or when you're bringing in a really big fruit salad, all of yeah. those 
you know, so not to show like, oh, well, you know, I'm do doing this so that you can be healthier because I know right. you're otherwise going to pig out on those donuts. Yeah. God forbid, no. Right. You know, you want to be very careful how you bring, how you uh, bring this up and really giving people the idea that you trust them to make their right. own choices and the choices they make are not your business. You're right. just trying to create an environment where um, people are free uh, to make their choices and where they have choices. Yeah. And I think a great point and very well said too. The, the, the interesting struggle that, you know, I, I think that this, like bo both the, the do donut example and the alcohol example bring up is like what, you know, where, when it crosses the line into the business environment, uh, whether I'm reimbursing on a trip, whether I'm bringing in, what do I bring in for breakfast or lunch even? Because lunch I, I'll tell you as a trainer, I know I'm screwed in the afternoon if there's a pasta served for, you know, forget about it, right? Like you can't fall asleep if I'm talking because I'm way too loud for that, but I can't compete against lasagna. When I see lasagna, I'm like, <laughs> nope, it's going to be a bad afternoon. I'm going to just be talking the whole way through. Nobody's going to interact with me. God forbid I ask them to do something like a role play. Like they will want to kill me, right? So so like, you know, that's the interesting, I think, dilemma. And I think where heart rate variability and these type of conversations are putting sort of a, a dilemma, and, you know, I love my dilemmas because we can talk about them is, you know, what you eat for breakfast at home, not any of my business, really. Now, will that impact your performance? Yeah. So it's tricky in some ways. Uh, now, probably not where you're going to get fired or keep your job kind of level of performance, but maybe overall. So it's like, it's that interesting thing about when we look at the business environment, where where do we support wellness at the expense of something everybody loves, like a rich chocolate cake for everybody's birthday? Uh, you know, and just kind of weighing those two things. And I think that if we can recognize that dilemma, hopefully we can have conversations about it as well. Um, Matt, if I can add, yeah, go for it, Dave. Uh, so my wife actually, uh, she she came up with the idea of bringing in um, special drinks for people, and um, and but uh, but sparkling water, uh, flavored yeah. sparkling waters in, in different varieties, um, and uh, and it's amazing how much people appreciate yeah. that. I uh, and it's a it's a very cheap thing, and it makes people feel appreciated and you're having a special drink and socializing stuff. Absolutely. Um, you know, so by no means is it alcohol, uh, but it still gives you that special feel, which yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. And I love, I've, I've only been in like the Denver WeWorks office uh, to do some trainings there. I love kombucha on tap. Like, yeah. I think that that's, yeah. I, I like, I joke it because it's a social service organization. So we all come in with our big uh, growlers to uh, suck up as much of that free uh, kombucha as we can. But it's like, I think it's a great example of that. And I know WeWorks then has alcohol at the end of the day, sometimes for folks uh, with that. But I think it's a great example. You know, and, and this is where, and I think we do a good job in the book of uh, suggesting this is like having, you know, a nutritional month having a sleep month, you know, where, hey, maybe we do, uh, and I think we give this suggestion in the book of, you know, put your logo on a sleep mask, probably something that's going to cost a few bucks per mask, but it allows you to talk about it. And that's bring a nutritionist in and talk about the relationship between nutrition and the autonomic nervous system. Like, and, and doing that because Ina's point is being non-judgmental in that, you know, bring it up the uh, what alcohol does to the system and moderation versus, I mean, you know, like I said, the, the biggest human uh, study I'd love to do is like the free happy hour at an embassy suites uh, during a conference because whew, they, that get, that's get, that's getting interesting really quick. Uh, give a bunch of people free booze and it gets ugly quick. So like just having these conversations so Dave, we could do, because Dave and I did this thing around supplements, uh, another really tricky issue and trying to find ones that improve heart rate variability and then feeling like, can we really do supplements? Because we don't know what supplements people are going to pick up. So I really believe having those conversations 
is really key here. And trying to do that in that non-judgmental way uh, where people don't feel like, oh, my behavior is bad, but giving them information to consider other things, but which is still in itself not the easiest thing to do. But I think, you know, a good start for folks. Any other thoughts on, on this piece? I know we go in these last two chapters into depth on this, but any any other thoughts uh, before we wrap up? Yeah, to, to add to that, Matt, uh, you know, the, the idea of that monthly theme. So it's not the individual is the problem, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's no, yeah. this is what we're doing this month. Everybody's working on this. Um, well, we're, we're, we're having amazing. alcohol month because of what day is <laughs> Christmas party. <laughs> that's, it, that's right. <laughs> alcohol awareness month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, but the other thing is uh, local professionals too. Um, so, you know, like if you're having the sleep awareness month, for example, or nutrition awareness month, um, you could bring in a professional locally and those professionals will oftentimes come in for free. Yeah. Uh, actually, they'll always come in for free because they are hoping, of course, for referrals. Yeah. And sometimes they may even bring in something like a healthy snack for everybody to enjoy. They might bring in, uh, you know, sleep masks with their own logo on to hand out to your employees. Uh, so so those are always uh, possibilities. If you look around, ask around, um, there's always somebody willing to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And again, uh, setting them up as a referral, you know, mutually beneficial. And people right. come give an hour talk, even like, I, I know our rate, it's fairly, most businesses could afford that. So, you know, looking at bringing in those expertise, uh, like I said, I, I loved, I knew a clinic that did the the logo embroidered, Sleep mask, great way to show you care. You may have already given them a ton of shirts. So just something a little bit different. Earplugs they can take with them. Just kind of being really creative with that. Um, and again, it's it's an educational piece. And really, I think for, for leaders, really setting up those high performance moments as well. It's like, you know, donuts on a typical Wednesday when it's just a typical Wednesday and Thursday is going to be a typical Thursday. Yeah, that's probably not going to do irreparable harm in any way, shape, or form to anybody. Um, however, you know, uh, looking at, hey, Friday, we have a big presentation. Let's go into high performance mode, understanding how these different behaviors that, hey, you might not want to have two or three drinks Thursday night before the big uh, event on Friday, you know, and, you know, kind of setting that ahead of time and, and having people come up with their own plans for those those peak performances with that as well. And I think that that gives us the, a, a way in to talk about this uh, piece, because like I said, if I'm not talking as a therapist, at least about movement, nutrition, uh, sleep, I know I'm setting that ceiling on how much I can help folks. I think in some ways you can put that in the business environment as well. If we want high performance, but somebody's only getting four hours of sleep at night. Somebody's eating a very inflammatory diet. They're living a sedentary lifestyle. We're probably not getting that performance that they're capable of getting. So at least educating people and then letting them make their own decisions, I think can be a huge step in the right direction with the acknowledgement. This is tricky ground. I, I think I, that's what we reinforce throughout the chapter as well is, it's not easy, but hopefully some of the handouts we give folks uh, can be a, really be a resource to start those uh, conversations. Any other final thoughts before we close up for the day? All right, great conversation. So Ina, Dave, I wanna thank you for this series. I, I know for our listeners, we got uh, another uh, chapter in the conclusion to go. I'll do a quick introduction for those. Uh, but not only was it a great pleasure and so much fun writing the book with you, it was almost more fun talking about it uh, a year or so after we published it. So I want to thank you both uh, for taking this journey with me and uh, look forward to our next one. So, And everybody, Absolutely. as always, you can find show notes, resources at OptimalHRV.com. Again, the handouts that I was speaking of, OptimalHRV.com backslash handouts will get you to a page. With all that, you can download the book for free. And uh, as always, we appreciate you listening to us. So Dave, Ina, thanks so much. Uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you, Dave.